time, is there any referrals, withdrawals, or consents? Okay, Mr. Bergman. I have a motion which uh, hopefully will be distributed and delivered to everyone. Uh, requesting it be put on by consent. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature, the County of Orange, supporting the suspension of final permitting for the CPB project and Valley Lateral project to allow for further review by the New York State Commissioner of Health and the New York State Attorney General. Second. Just a question yes. uh, for council. I know that there are some of us, including myself, who have to abstain. Uh, is this the point where we have to make that clear that we will not discuss the issue and we will be abstaining from any votes pertaining to this? Uh, yes, under our rules of ethics, um, it, it precludes you if, if you find that there is uh, a conflict and that you cannot participate, then uh, what you need to do is abstain not only from the vote, from uh, but for any uh, participation, uh, so that would include uh, placing the item on the agenda. Okay, thank you. So I, I just wanted to make that clear that I will be abstaining. I know that there are others Why? who will have to abstain. Why? Excuse me. Why? Thank you. Why? 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 Uh, Why? Why? Yeah. Absolutely. The conflict is I had a family member who did legal work for CPV years ago, and I have been told by legal counsel this whole journey to, to abstain, and that's not going to be any differently tonight. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Bonasek. Mr. Kulasek? Yes, I'll be recruiting myself also for uh, advisory opinion from the Ethics Council. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mr. Martens, would you mind? You're putting that right in our eyes, and I can't even see people, so I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. Kadu. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I, too, uh, oh. <clears throat> will have to abstain. Uh, I've been in contact oh. with the board. Excuse me, people. Please let him speak. With the Board of Ethics as well, regarding a possible conflict that prevents me from voting yes or no on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Padu. Mr. Hines. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I, too, have to abstain. I, in my private sector employment, I'm employed by the law firm of Finkelstein and Partners to avoid any appearance of impropriety. I must abstain. My firm has an existing case against uh, CPV, which I am intricately involved in. Legislator O'Donnell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Due to my work for the IDA on this project, I am also recusing myself. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're back to the consent. Are there any objections? Uh, Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, can I ask, is this uh, resolution exactly the same wording as the resolution that came before a committee that was defeated, or has it been changed in the interim? There are a couple of modest changes. First, in committee, it was brought up uh, a request by a legislator to add the word expeditiously on the third from the last line on the first resolve clause. And we, I willingly accepted that change. Uh, and the other was who, if it's fortunate enough to be entertained and passed by this legislature, notification who receives it was widened a little bit to include all the uh, Senate and Assembly members, as well as the governor. And we already had the uh, Health Commissioner and the Attorney General. Thank you. Uh, any objections to this consent? Hearing none, I will put it on as item number 26. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. 27, 27, excuse me. And Mr. Kulisek, I believe you had your yes. hand raised Thank before. You, Thank Chair. you. I'd like to make a motion to uh, introduce a resolution recognizing September 15th through October 15th uh, since 2017 as National Hispanic Heritage Month. Second. Thank you. Are there any objections? Then I will put it on as item number 28. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along. Under communications A, received and filed. 
Under reports, double A referred to all legislators, double B received and filed, double C received and filed, and number one. Legislators in Agostakis, Amo, O'Donnell, Ekes, Chemnitz, Ruskevich, Sullivan. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature designating October 2017 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Second. Any questions or comments? All right, all Republicans, yes, Ms. Bonasek. <coughs> all Dems, thank you, Mr. Turnbull. Anything else? Okay. I'll call the roll. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekes? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Pulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Bureau? 19 ayes, 2 absent. Thank you. Number two. Legislators in Agnostakis, Amo, O'Donnell, Ekes, Chemnitz, Ruskevich, DeSullivan. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature recognizing October 15, 2017 is White Cane Awareness Month. Second. Discussion? Ms. Bonasek, all Republicans. Mr. Turnbull, all Dems. Thank you. There you go. The Independence Party jumped us to the first of the class. <laughs> Roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekes? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Bureau? 19 eyes. Number three. Legislators in Agnostakis, Amo, O'Donnell, Ekes, Chemnitz, Ruskevich, and Sullivan. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature recognizing October 2017 as National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Second. Turnbull. Yes. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Bureau. 19 eyes. Number four. Legislator Anagnostakis, resolution of the Orange County Legislature for the County of Orange, New York, urging the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation to review the Federal Energy Resource Commission's FERC decision issued September 15, 2017, and to consider all legal options to protect the public health and environment. Second. Mr. Agastavis, was that a hand I saw? You did. Thank you, Madam Chair, again. Where to start here? Um, so number one, I want to thank all the citizens for being here. Um, you guys are fighting for what you really believe in and uh, you're looking for help from anywhere you can get it. Um, so we're here in front of the legislature today. Um, this resolution was put together by me at the very last second after FERC took its action against the state DEC. Um, but I wanna make clear what we're doing here. This is what we call a memorialization. As some people have said before, there is no legal action that the Orange County Legislature can take um, that affects anything. We put together a statement that we stand behind, hopefully, and um, in this case, it's a very simple statement. It's basically a state's rights statement. It says that the state has the right over the federal government to determine its destiny. It says that uh, you, the DEC, who has a uh, interest in protecting the health and well-being of the citizens of the state, you said that you would take any legal action at this point that you could uh, to make sure that you protect the citizens' health and the environment. And we're saying as the Orange County Legislature that we urge you to follow through with what you committed to do. So to me, this is something that everyone can stand behind. Um, do what you're supposed to do, help the safety of the people of Orange County, and it's a state's rights issue over the federal government taking over. Uh, but it's just a request. They will do whatever they will do, whether we do this or not. Now, I think what we really are doing here today is we're not voting on these memorializations that are going to have any effect. 
What's on trial today, I think, is honesty and the democratic process. And I think sometimes honesty is lacking from leaders of, of a cause, and it does nothing but hurt your cause. Now, the, and again, this is tough to say, but I'm gonna say it. The Protect Orange County group and leadership put out on their website on 925.17, and I'm gonna quote, ever wonder how the legislators sleep at night when they have the power to stop CPV, but instead do nothing. Say it again, when they have the power to stop CPV, but instead do nothing. I'm sorry, citizens, your leaders aren't being honest with you at that point. This government, the Orange County Legislature, is the only government that has absolutely no power to do anything. Yes, your local government could have done something, your planning board could have done something, your state government could have done something, and your federal government could have done something. But I'm sorry. I don't wonder how these legislators sleep at night when they know they have the power to stop CPV because we don't have the power to stop CPV. I wonder how the people that wrote that are able to sleep at night. And that had to be said. I'm the author of this resolution because I'm giving them a tool that they can now take and say, hey, the legislature says, DEC, do your job and protect Orange County citizens. Take that as the leaders of this organization. Use it, but be honest and truthful to your followers about what's going on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Legislator Emo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I came in with, with ready to vote yes on, on the United Stockers resolution. Uh, Mike and I talked about it before the committee. I voted for it in the committee because exactly, I think he hit. He, he said exactly what he was trying to do. Uh, I said in that committee, and I'll say it again: it can be a tool for the group because you, even more so now, as the 27 of you stood up here and wrote the and, and recited the litany of issues that you think are relevant. Our resolution partners with you by saying, please look at these things, review them. You listed them. If you're running the organization, you should be using every one of the transcribed statements that were given here today, along with our resolution to say to everybody, here are the issues we're concerned about. We talk about review and we talk about taking legal action. Look at, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm from that, that represented part of the county where when you, when, whenever you do a building, see, you, you do a seeker, you get sued. And that, that's a part of Monroe that I represent. We're sued all the time for, for I'm Seeker. I don't know why, well, I haven't heard a lot about all the, the problems with the, with the Seeker and, and the two town boards, the boards down there. I don't know enough about that, why they didn't take action or why somebody else didn't take action that, to, to bring a healthier thing. But maybe this review will look at it. Certainly you raised the question of health. And, and, and we're gonna later talk about autism and thinking about how we're gonna treat people with differently who have disabilities. You raise some interesting questions, not facts, I'm not gonna say they're true, but is there a connection? And that's exactly, I think, what, what this resolution says. Let's review some of this stuff. And, and you know, I, I got a, on, on a sidebar to this thing, I think the woman who mentioned the, the methane and was quoting the different scientists, you know, if I was on the edge, I went over the top because I'm a Purdue Boilermaker. And I graduated from Purdue and Boiler. When that lady said Purdue said it was good, I knew I had to vote for it, so thank you. Thank you. Legislator Sullivan. Thank you. So, in an effort to produce a, um, a bipartisan product, which will better protect the safety and the health and safety of the Orange County residents, I would like to offer the following amendment. And I'd like to urge my fellow legislators to put our residents um, before any any type of politics, let's let's come out with a uh, a good memorialization that we can all agree with. Um, and Kelly is going to be handing that amendment out. So I'm going to read it into the minutes. Um, it reads, and there's an extra resolved. Resolved that the New York State Commissioner of Health should review, analyze, and investigate new scientific data and information regarding this project and 
that the Attorney General will review, analyze, and investigate instances of possible misconduct, improper lobbying, and questionable activities that have been widely, widely alleged, and that a copy of this resolution be sent to the New York State Commissioner of Health, the Office of the New York State Attorney General, and our members of the New York State Legislature upon passage. Second. Right, discussion on the amendment. this discussed before and it's part of Mr. Berkman's resolution too about the health please explain to me the jurisdiction that the health department commissioner of health has to review this stuff it's my understanding that they look at post data they look at data about complaints that there's problems with, with water or problems and they go in and collect the data what we're asking them to do here is I guess some type of a, of a, of a national study of similar kind of projects and ask them to tell us that this particular project will result in the same thing. Is that within the jurisdiction of the New York State Department of Health? I, I don't know. I, I want to know. Any other further comments? Mr. Turnbull? This is on the motion. How do you get in the I just want to speak generally. You're on the amendment. Let's take Mr. Ickes on the amendment. You betcha. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the resolution that uh, we are considering, considering here, uh, resolution number four, with a simple phone call, and by the way, I made about five of them to the DEC, okay? The DEC is infuriated with FERC. They are currently doing everything they can, legally and otherwise, to reverse the decision of FERC and put the decision back in their hands, which they feel is their right. So this current resolution is nothing but a waste of our resources here at the legislature, having the ladies type this up, send it out, do all the work, unless we add something to it. Now, I don't have the answer to Legislator Amos' question directly, but I certainly would think that the health department, if there are health issues uh, insinuated in the working of this plant, that they would look into it, that the attorney general will review and analyze it. And we had a long discussion. I think that one of the, because I was at the health and mental health uh, committee meeting as a member, as I always am, and we were discussing it, and I believe that one of the problems that maybe some folks had was us demanding the stopping of the construction at CPV. Now, there's a question I would have. Do we have the right to do that? Well, we can ask for it, but certainly there's no legal rights or anything else like that. Now, you call another phone call, the Attorney General's office, and you ask them, are you reviewing this? Are you analyzing it? And you know the answer you get? It's a possible investigation. We cannot release any information at this time. So we don't know what they're doing. You call the Department of Health, New York State Department of Health. Okay, another simple phone call. Ask the same question. The answer is, this is a possible investigation, therefore we can't comment on it. And what we're doing is simply asking them to do that. We're asking them to look into it. And as I stated at the Health and Mental Health, hey, who knows, maybe nothing will come of it. Maybe they will tell us that they found nothing. Maybe they will tell us, Mr. Amo, that they can't do anything about it. That's okay. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. But if they haven't been asked, they're not going to do anything about it. Yeah. And that's all we're doing is asking you. We're just asking you. So please bear that in mind. We took out the whole business of stop the work, bring it to immediate halt, because in our discussions in the Democratic caucus, we really wondered whether that was our ability and we should do that. We're just asking. Let's get right on it. 
Start reviewing those permits. Make sure everything was right. Make sure everything was legal. Make, as the folks said, no bribery or anything else like that going on. And if you can't ask that, just ask of it, then there's no purpose in sending this resolution four ahead. Because I assure you, I called. I have many friends in DEC. I called them. They're absolutely livid. They're doing it already. We don't have to memorialize it. And, and as the comments of that this group can use this agenda item number four resolution, that's not what they want. They know the DEC is going to find out whether it's their legal right to put a stop to that permit. They're going to determine whether FERC had the right to step in or not. They already know, because I'm sure a lot of them, like me, called the DEC and realized that the DEC is doing something. And the DEC can comment. But what you can't find out is about the other two departments, which they were very interested in. The Department of Health, if it can do anything, and the Attorney General, if there's anything there to be found. Thank you. I thank my colleague for the very passionate um, speech. If I'm confused. I'm very confused. Again, I thought I was helping everyone by crafting this resolution. I mean, if people feel that this is going to do absolutely no good, well, I'm willing to vote no on it if you want to vote no on it. Um, we put a resolution together, a memorialization, that tells an agency that has the power to do something that, yes, says they want to. We agree with them. Do it for the safety and health of the citizens. What I'm not comfortable doing is putting in clauses to agencies where, quote, if they can do anything, quote, maybe they can't do anything, but let's do it anyway. To me, that's just pure politics. If we want to make all of you happy, we can do it. If you guys want to clap for us because we did a great thing, I guess we can do that. Let's put it in. I don't know if they can do anything. They may have no legal power, but let's do it anyway. That's not how you're supposed to write law, citizens. I'm sorry. So, uh, folks, please, please. So I'm sorry. If please excuse me. Thank you, Madam Chair. So again, I, you know, if people are not comfortable with my resolution because it does the obvious, a memorialization that does the obvious, that's what most memorializations do. We're talking do. about the amendment. Um, yeah, I've, I've talked about the amendment. I'm not comfortable with it for the reasons that I gave. I'll be voting against it. Any other comment on the amendment, Mr. Berkman? <laughs> I'm for any message that can go to Albany that expresses our concerns and concerns of the people of Albany. I think you were in the right space when you crafted the original resolution. But like you were saying, let's be honest, and I appreciate your honesty, I honestly think your resolution without the amendments is a bit flaccid. I think that we need to have a little more uh, power of our conviction. I heard someone say, act boldly. And, and I, I think we can act in a bipartisan, bold manner by agreeing to accept these amendments. Uh, as as uh, as from Mr. Amos' comments, uh, others have said how the county does not have jurisdiction over CPV, and they're absolutely right. We don't have the power to approve, not approve, right? Uh, but it's done mostly uh, on the state level. State empowers the local governments, and they have state secret laws. Uh, which protect the environment in order to have full airing. And we've heard from many people today about how that process has been incomplete. So it seems totally appropriate, appropriate to me, and I, this is from my resolution, primarily the two provisos, to have the state be involved in making a correction towards this imbalance. And since it's clearly an issue of public health, I don't think I need to lecture the State Health Commission about his jurisdiction over making comments about public health. That would be a bit And as for the, as for the uh, Attorney General goes, 
with indictments, with, with uh, possibly illegal lobbying, with chicanery on a business side of this equation. Uh, I think it's encouraging to the Attorney General to hear a local voice, even if we don't have the authority to do that investigation ourselves. So, Madam Chairwoman, if the amendment passes, then I would like to have my name added as a sponsor. If it does not uh, pass, then I still join efforts with you, Mr. Anagnostakis, and I'll vote for the resolution, despite its imperfections, but it's a step forward. Point of information. Thank you, Mr. Bertrand. Yes, Mr. Anagnostakis. Um, point of information, thank you. Uh, it seems to me that the uh, amendment mirrors exactly what uh, the Berkman basically what the Berkman resolution is at the end. So my question is, if the amendments were to pass, are you pulling your resolution at the end? Well, I'm. I'm uh... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> actually, actually, I prefer my resolution that it's early to be honest because it has a little more punch to it. Uh, my resolution because it calls for uh, a suspension of any permitting, but in, which I prefer. However, if we can come to a bipartisan agreement to add this right now, then I'll support it and I'll withdraw my consent resolution. Madam Chair, I'd like to call for a minute recess, please. Granted. Are you in attendance? Gentlemen, um, are there any further comments on the amendment that was presented? Mr. Mr. Just uh, some clarification. Some clarification is what we're agreeing to um, is if the uh, if, I, I don't, if our resolution number four passes as amended, we will or number twenty-seven. Yeah. Let's just do one thing at a time, okay? Thank you. I appreciate you trying, Mr. Turnbull. Okay, any further comments in regard to the amendment? Okay. All right, roll call on the amendment only. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? No. Benagnostakis? No. Benton? No. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? No. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? No. Ekis? Yes. Bagione? No. Hines? Abstain. Hemnitz? Yes. Kulasek? Abstain. O'Donnell? Accused. Padu? Abstain. Riscavage? No. Sullivan? Yes. Yeah. Bureau? No. That six eyes, eight no's, um, five abstentions, um, motion fails. Okay. All right, back to discussion. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I have an, an additional amendment that I'd like to add to Mr. Anagnostakis's. But first I'd like to say, this is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you kind of legislate on the fly. Um, and I think any of the agencies that have been documented and listed and uh, asked for uh, them to do their duty, it is their duty. There would be de a dereliction of their duties if they didn't pursue all legal uh, options and ramifications on this issue. But I do believe I'd like to add a whereas uh, before the now therefore it be hereby. 
I'd like to add the, whereas we, the Orange County Legislature, recognize the good paying union construction jobs and other economic benefits associated with these projects. Sure, absolutely. Whereas, we, the Orange County Legislature, recognize the good paying union construction jobs and other economic benefits associated with these projects. Okay, discussion on this amendment. Ms. Sullivan? I'm, I'm just a little confused. Wasn't there an article in the Times Herald record that said, I don't know, I think somebody said it before, that first they promised like 300 local jobs and there's only like 27. I mean, what, what were the numbers? Does anybody remember? I think it was. This isn't a discussion. Please just make your No, this okay. is my point. But we're not I have the floor. Back and forth. Okay, I, I have, all right, I have the floor on this amendment. So I don't understand where Mr. Benton it, comes up with the idea that these are good, so many good paying jobs in Orange County when, when, there was an article in the newspaper that clearly states that the, the number of real jobs was not what was promised. I, I can't in all conscious, in good conscious, support something like this because I don't believe it to be true. Right now, there are hundreds of our uh, local workforce and union members employed over there in the construction phase. The uh, Job numbers might possibly be uh, in the paper, would probably be operational jobs, which would be much less. Oh, okay, thank you. All right. Any further comments in regard to the amendment? Mr. Amo. Thank you. Um, I don't disagree with Mr. Benton. I suspect there were a lot of good jobs. I, I do disagree with putting it into this resolution because I, I, I don't find it as, as true to form of what we do. My own district in the southern part of the county tried to build a pipeline and put hundreds of hundreds of workers together. And all the county did was sue them to stop it so those laborers couldn't work. Maybe we should have put that resolution in that one. I don't think we should be putting in labor endorsements as part of it. Yeah. Right. Mr. Thank you. Um, I too agree with the philosophical idea behind what Mr. Benton said, but I thought that we already put out an entire resolution in 2012 that exemplified the points that he made. Although they were perhaps on wrong numbers or whatever, we put out a resolution that said we supported it at that time because of the good jobs and, and all that were coming. Whether it was right information or not, we've done it. I also would not like to see, uh, and I think it's very provocative for Mr. Benton to make that suggestion in this amendment, and you talk about <laughs> you talk about governing on the fly. What was that, Mr. Benton? Yeah. You know? Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I really don't think, I think it takes away from anything uh, that we're doing here. Um, this is going to the DEC. It's not going to the local unions. It's not, you know, going anyplace else. I, I think this is politics at, at its worst. So I definitely will not support this amendment. Right. Thank you, Mrs. Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just uh, really confused now. I think what we were discussing with uh, Resolution uh, four is whether or not we should be concerned about the plant poisoning the air and the water in Orange County. Are we now suggesting, or is Mr. Ben suggesting, that uh, it was worth it for the jobs that it, it provided? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we need to focus on why we're here. It's clear that uh, the people that live near this plant are very concerned. These are not crazy people. They've done a lot of research, and they are very concerned. If you live there, 
you would be concerned too. So let's really get off the grand wagon here. Let's focus at uh, what's at hand and uh, you know make the right decision for the people. Ms. Kemnitz. I do agree with those of you who have spoken just before. This resolution is coming out of health and mental health, not economic development. So it's totally out of place as far as I'm concerned. I'll be voting against it. Yeah. All right, this, this is getting a little ridiculous, I think. Uh, I understand the comments of everybody, and I might not be in agreement with putting this in here because, yeah, we're looking for the safety and the health of the people. It's not a jobs uh, resolution, but in order to get the votes, to get it to pass, so you'll have something to fight for the people, you know, sometimes you have to compromise on something. I, did I just hear you say sometimes you have to compromise? Didn't you vote against the compromise? Yeah. I don't get it. That was a compromise with a ribbon in a box. And you guys uh, play partisan politics, is how I look at it. Uh, I, I don't have that much of a problem with uh, your, your uh, overtly political uh, last second resolution, Mr. Benton, except amendment, except for, uh, I, I question, I you know, wonder whether it's legal. I mean, if you were to refer to as prevailing wage jobs, that would be better resolution and uh, all 27 of them. You know, so if you, if you make your uh, amendment to reflect those two changes, then I'll support. So you'll compromise. Any other comments? All right, then roll call, please. On the amendment. Bonasek? Turnbull? Amo? No. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Yes. Berkman? No. Dillard? No. DeSalvo? Yes. Ekis? No. Fagione? Yes. Hines? Abstain. Hemnitz? No. Pulisic? No. O'Donnell? No. Paduk? Ruskevich? Yes. Sullivan? No. Vera? Yes. Benelli? Yes. Seven no. ayes, seven noes, five abstentions. Motion fails. All right, now we're back to the original resolution, and I'm going to go back in my notes here, which was hours ago, which felt like. Mr. Ruskevich, did you have comments? Yes. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to say I was one of the uh, legislators who did vote no on this in committee. Um, since then, I've received uh, numerous uh, emails, phone calls, comments from constituents. Uh, some of them, uh, first, I'd like to say some of them. Uh, suggested that my no vote was because I don't care about the health and well-being of my constituents. That's completely false. It's ridiculous. Um, I do realize that there are a number of uh, concerned constituents. This has become a very convoluted process here, I think. Uh, it's come, obviously become very political. Um, I think it's the session here today, you know, with all these amendments and uh, recesses and all that, uh, I think what we're doing here today is we are trying to do committee work here on the floor, which I'm opposed to. I think this discussion should be done in committee. I think we should send it back to committee so that we can come back with one memorialization on this topic instead of two, and send one memorialization up to Albany. Therefore, I'm going to make a motion to send this back to committee. Do I hear a second to that? So just send it back to committee. Second. We have a second. Um, and I guess for how long? Discussion on the, uh, on the motion, please. Discussion on the motion, Mr. Nagasdakis. Uh, just point of information, please. Um, 
if it does go back to committees, everyone needs to realize that October is time constrained and uh, utilized for budgetary purposes, usually only. So chances are we're we're talking a few months at least down the line. Any other comments on the motion? Yes, Ms. Sullivan. I, I would consider this topic to be a bit of an emergency and a situation that, and I would ask you respectfully as chair of the Health and Mental Health Committee to make room for this topic on your agenda. Um, as a member of that committee, I would certainly support putting in extra time of my time as a committee member anyway to sit and study and in the spirit of cooperation um, come up with a, um, a memorialization that's more palatable to all of us. Mr. Nagastan. Thank you again, Madam Chair. Um, I have it on good authority that the Chairman of the Health and Mental Health Committee will not entertain any of these memorializations anymore on his committee. Um, the, um, the last committee, we did entertain a couple of them. Um, but actually, the Chairman talked with many of the citizens, um, gave them a lot of time on the phone, um, allowed them to bring forward their resolution to the committee. Uh, even when it was past deadline, put it on the committee agenda, uh, debated the issue on the committee, uh, even wrote a resolution himself to help the citizens in their fight, and allowed an up and down vote on every single memorialization that was there. All of those things I don't think were obtainable from any other committee chairman. And uh, in return, the people running Protect Orange County put after that meeting, a video of the meeting and said, this was yet again a rigged, crooked Orange County Legislative Committee meeting. So I've been called a lot of things in my life, but a, a rigged, crooked Republican, I don't think I've ever been called before. Um, I don't think this belongs on the Health and Please. Mental Health Committee. Uh, if you're gonna be reworking resolutions and memorializations, I think they need to be on a different committee if the chair of that committee will allow it on. Um, I only brought these because I thought we had finished products that were simple memorializations to help the people out there in their fight. Um, so anyway, that's the information I can give you from the chair of the committee. Any other further comments on, yes, Mr. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, um, and, and we'll vote in a minute. But I do want to say that the chair of the Health and Mental Health Committee was very accepting and I appreciate that. And he did take and, uh, you know, bring forth these memorializations. Um, I sat on that committee, and I actually thought it was going to be give and take uh, of the uh, two memorializations that were there. Apparently, I'm wrong. But I certainly hope that the chair of the Health and Mental Health doesn't mean what he just said about never uh, entertaining a memorialization. That, that's, that's a very dangerous thing to say at this point. I understand why he's upset. He's taken a lot of grief for it, and I understand that, and I know it's tough. We're, we're all human beings, and we have feelings, but, um, you know, I, I just hope it's not, I, I think it's emotional right now for all of us, and we'll leave it at that. Any other comments? Uh, first of all, I, I just want to say one thing thing in that um, from the get-go I've been rather troubled by two different resolutions and I know to identify the resolutions the public has identified them as Republican and Democratic emotion, uh, resolutions and quite frankly I don't think that sends a really strong message there was a speaker here I believe she was number four and I don't remember her name but she talked about the idea of one strong resolution and I think we would not be doing the public any service whatsoever to, and I think the statement was made before by passing resolutions on the fly. And that's really what we're doing. We're doing the committee work, as Legislator Briscovich said very, very well. We're doing committee work sitting here today. And I've objected to this before, and I object to it again. We're not coming up with a solid resolution that has any type of teeth and that Albany is going to listen to. 
for us to send two different resolutions up there while they may complement each other, it doesn't show a strong unified, and someone else said a unified front, and I think it was the lady in the white shirt in front of me. Um, I, I just don't think that this is the right way to do this, and I think that we've been shortchanging everybody, including ourselves, by not really, we've done this before, and I believe uh, Legislator Cheney, who couldn't be with us today, along with, I believe it was you, Matt, that they sat down and they ironed out something that everybody could get along with. So um, that's just my comments. And at this point, if there's no other comments on the motion to send it back to committee, I will ask for a roll call. Point of information. Yes. Just want to make clear from Mr. Ruskevich's motion, it's a motion to send back to committee. It doesn't specify any committee. Correct? Correct. Thank you. Roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagastakis? Yes. Benton? Yes. Berkman? No. Dillard? No. Salvo? Yes. Ekis? No. Beggione? Yes. Hines? Abstain. Eminence? No. Bullisek? O'Donnell? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Ruskevich? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Bureau? Yes. Benelli? Yes. yes. Ten eyes, four no's. Motion fails. Moving on to number five. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> To vote on the resolution as originally presented. Bonasek? Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Monagastakis? Yes. Benton? No. Berkman? Yes. Cheney? Oops, I apologize. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Fagione? Yes. Hines, Hemnitz, yes. Pulisek, yes. O'Donnell, yes. Paduk, yes. Ruskevich, yes. Sullivan, yes. Bureau, yes. Benelli. Yes. 13 ayes, <coughs> one no, motion passes. Appreciate it. Moving to number five. Legislators Ruskevich and Sullivan. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to appropriate fourth year budget period funds from the New York State Department of Health pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Thank you. Comments? Discussion? Roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Benelli? 19 eyes. Number six, please. Legislators Chemnitz and Sullivan, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to appropriate fifth year budget period funds from the New York State Department of Health pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Mr. DeSalvo is added, please. All right, roll call. Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? 
Berkman, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Benelli, 19 eyes. Number seven, please. Legislator Sullivan and Ekis, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Mental Health to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Office of Mental Health pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Ms. Chemnitz? Delighted. Turnbull, Emo, Benagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Dillard, DeSavo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Benelli. 18 eyes, one abstention. Uh, yeah. All right, so we need to remove you. Is that what we're saying? Okay. Remove Thank Mr. Ekis from number seven. Yes. Please understand I fully support this. Thank you, Mr. Ekis. Okay, number eight. Legislators Chemnitz and Bonasek, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Planning to apply for, accept, and appropriate funds from the New York State Department of Transportation pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Salvo added, please. Roll call. Anasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Benelli? 19 eyes. Number nine? Legislators Benelli, Amo, Bonasek, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Pulisek, Brescia. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature and Orange County Executive calling on all state, county, and local officials, residents, and business owners to adopt the Think Differently initiative to assist individuals with special needs and their families. Okay, discussion. All Republicans are at it, all, and all Dems, please. <coughs> Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Ickes. Um, having a wonderful daughter with special needs, I hope this passes unanimously among us. It's very important that all folks are treated alike and have the same opportunities. And I'm glad that this is brought forward. Even though it's a memorialization, I'm glad it's been brought forward for us. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Ickes. Okay, roll call. No, okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think when you this came from committee, you all saw the paperwork for Julie's Jungle. That is a, a cousin, my cousin's daughter. That was Julie's Jungle in Dutchess County. It was named after her. Uh, she died at the age of 15. And, uh, Mr. Molinaro was fantastic in helping put that together. And, uh, I hope everybody supports it for that reason as well. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Benelli. 19 eyes. Number 10. Legislators Padu, Chemnitz, and Bodicek. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature for the County of Orange, State of New York, to the President of the United States and the United States Congress in support of federal legislation HR 2808, known as the First Time Homeowner Savings Plan Act. Second. Discussion. All Dems, please. And all Republicans as well. And all independents. We do have a question over there, yes. Yeah, quick question. Um, it says individual retirement plans. Is that including Roth, both Roth and traditional? I believe that Mr. Paduke did bring his, his forth at the Rules Committee, so we like You want to put that in there, Mike? Specify Roth and, IR, and traditional IRAs. I, I think uh, I was with uh, Congressman Maloney when he presented this. Uh, I think they are included. However, if we can 
at it if you'd like at it, I guess, you know. I mean, his law is, is his law anyway. Um, we're here to support it. What that law actually does is uh, it amends the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 to include the amount that can be withdrawn without penalty from individual retirement plans. So I would assume that Roths are that uh, for first-time homebuyer distributions. The bill would increase that amount that could be withdrawn from such plans, penalty free, on distributions for first-time home buyers from $10,000 to $25,000 in any taxable year beginning in 2018. So I would think that they, they are included as well, their retirement plans, right? Okay, I just, I wanted to make sure, because I know there's more stringent stipulations on one retirement plan versus the other. So I didn't know if it was included. So it might be, it's just not in this resolution. Thanks. I'm good with the law, though. This makes sense. Any further comments? All right, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Pulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Benelli? 19 eyes. Okay, number 11. Legislator Benton. Resolution providing for a public hearing on the proposed Orange County budget for the fiscal year 2018 social services district purposes and upon the assessment rolls for Orange County Sewer District Number 1, Orange County Small Watershed Protection District Number 1 for Cromline Creek and Beaver Dam Lake District for such fiscal year pursuant to sections 271 and 359 of the County Law and section 4.06 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Magnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Benelli. 19 eyes. Okay. I will. Oh, I'm, that's a very good point. October 18th. Of 17, and it's at 5 o'clock, and the public hearing is here, I believe. Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Point of order. Um, are the numbers on this correct? Uh, annual salary to members of the county legislature, annual salary to chairman of the county legislature, annual salary to the majority leader, annual salary to the minority leader, 36000 That's what it is? Okay. 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 Thank you. Did he get that? He wants a rebate. Okay. Number 12. Legislators Benton and Berkman. Resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County pursuant to section 10184 of the Real Property Tax Law and Orange County Amended Local Law Number 2 of 2010. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Abstain. Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Biro, Benelli. 18 ayes, one abstention. Number 13, please. Legislators Benton, DeSalvo, and Anagnostakis. Refunding bond resolution dated October 5th, 2017. Refunding bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, adopted October 5th, 2017, authorizing the refunding of certain outstanding serial bonds of said county, stating this this plan of refunding, appropriating an amount not to exceed 14 million for such purpose, authorizing the issuance of not to exceed 14 million refunding bonds to finance said appropriation and making certain other determinations relative thereto. Second. All right, this is a bonding resolution. It needs 14 votes. Any comments? Okay. Roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Benelli. 19 eyes. Number 14. 
Legislators Benton and Hines. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2017 county budget for the Orange County Real Property Tax Services Office pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Benelli. 19 eyes. Number 15 is also a bond resolution. <coughs> Meeting 14 votes. Legislators Vero, Turnbull, Benton, O'Donnell. Bond resolution dated October 5th, 2017. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the phase three realignment of runway 321 at the Orange County Airport. Stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 14,100,000, appropriating 5,100,000, therefore, in addition to the 9 million previously appropriated, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 255,000 bonds of the county, in addition to the 450,000 bonds previously authorized, and authorizing the expenditure of 12 1690 expected to be received from the United States of America and 705,000 expected to be received from the state of New York towards the cost thereof or redemption of the bonds issued therefore or to be budgeted as an offset to the taxes for the payment of the principal of and interest on said bond. Second. Thank you. Ms. Chemnitz? Ms. Chemnitz added? Anybody else? Discussion? Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? No. Gikis? Bagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Benelli? 17 eyes, two noes. Okay, number 16, please. Legislators Turnbull, Kulisek, Benton, and Benelli. Resolution authorizing the county executive and or the deputy county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Real Property Tax Services Agency to accept funds from the New York State Department of Transportation pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law in section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Mr. Dillard? Oh, I, I agree. Delighted. Number 17, please. Okay, anybody else? All right. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Benelli? 19 eyes. Number 17, please. Legislators Turnbull and Benton. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature Office authorizing a fee acquisition for a parcel of real property situated in the town of Hamptonburg, County of Orange, State of New York, in connection with a drainage rehabilitation project. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yep. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan, Vero, Benelli, 19 eyes. Number 18, please. Legislators Turnbull and Benton. Resolution amending resolution number 187 of 2017 to correct the reimbursement amount and obligation of the County of Orange to the County of Sullivan with regard to intermunicipal agreement for the rehabilitation of bridge bid number 3344360. Second. Mr. Berkman? I don't have a problem with supporting this. It's a modest amount of money, but I would appreciate if we had more specificity as to the name of the bridge or the street that it's on. It just goes by a number. I, I, I'd have to second what Mr. Berkman said. I didn't know which bridge this was. I wasn't at the uh, meeting. Um, so I called uh, Mr. Ewald and um, he explained to me that this bridge is actually in my district. And I said, well, you know, it would be nice if from now on you actually uh, wrote in the resolution somewhere where these bridges are located so that 
we would know without having to go back to any of the packet sorts of meetings. So I would also like to have my name added, please. Thank you for your comments and your name has been added. Anything else? Okay, roll call please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Benagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell, Paduke, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Biro, Benelli, 19 eyes. Number 19, please. Legislators Ekus and DeSalvo, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services to apply for and accept grant funds from the United States Bureau of Justice Administration pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Thank you. Discussion? Mr. Berkman? and all Republicans. Could you have a and Mr. Dillard. And, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Emo would like to join us as well. Okay. Roll call, please. Von Lissek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Benelli, 19 eyes. Okay, number 20, please. Legislators Paduk and Fagione, resolution authorizing the county executive to accept a gift on behalf of the Orange County Department of Emergency Services, Fire Services, pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Thank you. Discussion? Mr. Berkman would like to be added. Anyone else? Mr. DeSalvo? Okay. Roll call, please. Anasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Gamo? Yes. Anagnostakis? <coughs> Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Padu? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Biro? Benelli? 19 eyes. Number 21, please. Legislators Cheney and O'Donnell, resolution authorizing the county executive to accept a certain gift on behalf of Orange County Community College, pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Second. Ms. Kemnitz. Thank you. Mr. Fagi and the two of you. Mr. Salvo as well. Mr. Bira. All down. Mr. Thank you, Ms. Miller. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Berkman, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Benelli. 19 eyes. Number 22, please. Legislators in Agnostakis and Dillard, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Veterans Service Agency to accept and appropriate funds received as a bequeathment pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Eminence and Fagione again. Okay. Sullivan and Ekis. Anyone else? Okay. Roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Benelli? 19 eyes. Okay, number 23, please. Legislators Turnbull and Benelli, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Office for the Aging to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Office for the Aging pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Okay, so Kemnitz and Fagione again, Mr. DeSalvo again. What about this side? <laughs> Thank you, roll call please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Benelli. 19 eyes. Okay, thank you. Number 24, please. Legislator Sullivan, Turnbull, O'Donnell, and Amo. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create senior public health educator at the Orange County Department of Health pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Mr. Berkman would like to be added. Okay. Roll call, please. 
Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Annette Mistakis? Yes. Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Benelli? 19 eyes. Number 25, please. Legislators Cheney, Paduk, Ekis, and Hines. Resolution authorizing the acceptance of the proposed contract with the Orange County Deputy Sheriff's Police Benevolent Association. Second. Discussion. Eminence and uh, Fagione again would like to be added. Ms. Sullivan. Mr. Diller. Oh, okay. And Mr. DeSalvo. Okay. Roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Berkman, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Benelli. 19 eyes. Number 26, Madam please. Chair, I'd like to take a three minute recess, please. Are, are you objecting? already, which is unusual for us as a legislature. I'm sorry. It's not 27 days. Okay. Excuse me? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. We were on number 26, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. We didn't vote on 26. Yet. We didn't vote on 25 yet, did we? Yeah, yeah, we just moved on 25. Okay, all right, yeah, we're good. All right, we're on 26. Did you read it yet? No. Okay. Legislators Fagione, Turnbull, Ekis, and Benton, an act to establish a new salary schedule therein applicable to all employees of the County of Orange who are included in the negotiating unit represented by the Orange County Deputy Sheriff's Police Benevolent Association. Second. Discussion. Your Paduke would like to be in. Thank you. Hey, okay. roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Benelli? 19 eyes. Okay. Number 27. 26. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I, I don't Mr. Benagas, yes. could you please clarify? Yeah, I was going to ask for a recess, but if my colleagues uh, don't want me to have one, that's fine. I'll uh, I'll take it back. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So number twenty-seven. Legislator Berkman, resolution of the Orange County Legislature for the County of Orange, New York, supporting the suspension of final permitting for the CPV project, the Valley Lateral Project, to allow for further review by the New York State Commissioner of Health and the New York State Attorney General. We have a second. Second. <coughs> Sorry. Discussion. Mr. Egan. Thank you. Um, in the hopes that this resolution will pass, um, I'd like to. Uh, have my name on it, but in the prospects of just recent events here at this legislative meeting, I would like to ask my fellow legislators, uh, if you are a no vote, is there anything that we can do as far as an amendment goes to try to get the number of yes votes that we need to get this through? If there is something totally objectionable, um, uh, you know, I, we'd like to know about it. Uh, because although, as mentioned by the, uh, Mr. Agnostakis, it was discussed in committee, there were relatively few of us there in the committee, uh, you know, to discuss it. So I open that as an opportunity to please make any amendments necessary. Thank you, Mr. Eagles. Mr. Ruskevich? Yes, uh, thank you again. Um, yeah, anytime a consent resolution comes up, I can't help but hear the voice of Dennis Simmons. 
i believe that there is a specific purpose for consent resolution specific criteria the following resolution i believe does meet those criteria this one does not i will not be voting in favor of it thank you comments um yeah, i'd like to thank all the people that came out tonight and spoke so passionately to this issue now, we as legislators are not typically assigned with determining if these kinds of projects are safe protect the environment and legitimately acquire funding and that the permits and licensing are properly examined and attained these are the questions we have to ask ourselves does new science suggest that these plans need further review to determine if they are safe or could be made safer <clears throat> were all the permits attained legally and is all the funding proper and does the agencies assigned with these tasks always protect us to make sure that our tax dollars are used in the best interest of the people we serve? If you need examples of when these principles are violated, I would just say tobacco, trans fats, Vietnam. They just had the 10 series, 10, 10 episode series on Vietnam. I was, I was just mesmerized by it. How did we stay in that mess? as long as we did. We need to get smarter. We need to look at the science on this issue. CPV Millennium Pipeline opponents are not fringe people. They are families, concerned citizens that have done their research and are alarmed at what they find. They are more knowledgeable on this issue than we are. We should heed their call. Some will label them NIMBY or not my backyard types. The problem is that this is now in everyone's backyard. How many massive storms are we going to tolerate? How many millions of acres of forest are we going to watch burn? How many feet of ocean rise? We have an opportunity today to be on the front line in embracing common sense, sanity, and science. I urge everyone to support all efforts today to provide the protection of our citizens. Thank you. I'll be, I'll be quick because the time is lean, and, and I'm a no vote on this. And you know, I think we did the resolution. We gave the power to the group that needs it to work with it. As I said then, I am just amazed, though, and I, I probably be a little more political than I should be at this moment, but. I'm just so amazed at, and, and, and understanding why the folks in the audience are, are questioning our resolve and our efforts. And, and I can sit with you on this one. My district in, in the southern part of the county decides to do something that has an environmental problem to it. And this body spends a half a million dollars to stop it. Sues it, pays for studies, tries to stop the pipeline. You guys come in and say, just give me a resolution. And we say no. Half a million dollars. There's probably more than a million dollars to be spent on this pipeline to fight it for one town in the county. I don't understand why they don't like the Monroe pipeline, but they really love CVP. So I can understand why you're here. In the spirit of um, legislator Dennis Simmons, I have a little story to tell. I'll make it quick, I promise. When I first got elected um, and first served in 2013, I considered myself to be a very lucky girl um, because I had the opportunity to, um, to do such an important job. And I remember when I first sat up here the first couple of times, I thought, wow, these people are really angry at each other. <laughs> and I think that the only thing that they're angry at is that not everyone is with the same political party. And that's so sad because we're all very nice people personally, and I think we all want to do the right thing. I, I, when I, I remember um, working with Dennis, giving him a call, because he seemed like one of the angry ones at the time. Um, and I remember thinking, let me just give it a try, because I bet you he's a really nice guy. And I gave him a call and I said, Dennis, what do you think about my retirement incentive resolution? How can we make this better? 
And he was completely honest with me, and he was excited about working with me on this. And he gave me his input, and he made a lot of sense, and we worked together on that resolution. Um, and um, it turned out to be a really great, great resolution. And we ended up saving so much money for the county because, because a Democrat and a Republican actually sat down together and agreed on things and disagreed on others, but made it work. So the point of my story is, in the spirit of Dennis Simmons, in the spirit of cooperation here, um, can't, we, can't we pass two resolutions to prove to Orange County that even though we are on opposite sides of the aisle, we all want what's best for the health and the safety of our residents. Well, first of all, I want to thank the uh, legislature for having my resolution being placed on the agenda for discussion. I wasn't sure you'd even support that, uh, so I was pleasantly surprised. I've, sped, I've st stated just about everything, except for a couple of things. Uh, and and uh, I'm, I'm not warm and fuzzy about this. I'm kind of annoyed, actually. But Mr. Aimbo, I think you give a great comment, and then I, you came to the conclusion that I, quite, I don't understand. You, you, you're saying that your district was disadvantaged by the legislature, I get it. Uh, it was actually an, it, was a, it was a statement worth putting on the record, I believe. But then like, your conclusion is not to support uh, having a statement being sent to Albany about the power plant. I respect you, you're a man of, of great intellect. Uh, we don't always agree, and I guess this is another one. Uh, for the rest of the people that voted no, uh, here's your last shot. I mean, I'm a realist. I don't expect uh, Red Sea to park here in, in Orange County Legislature. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I see it as, as a way out for those that haven't haven't made a statement about their concern about protecting the health and, and uh, of the people of Orange County. And it's a moderate statement. When I drafted my words, it was with the total intent to be bipartisan. It was drafted in a way, at least my intent, was not to be alienated, so that we could avoid this kind of display of blatant partisanship, which this devolved into today. Bonasek? Turnbull? Yes. Amo? No. Benectostakis? No. Benton? No. Berkman? Yes. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? No. Ekis? Yes. Pagione? No. Hines? Abstain. Hemnitz? Yes. Kulasek? O'Donnell? Paduk? No. Ruskevich? No. Sullivan? Yes. Bureau? No. Benelli? No. Six ayes, eight noes, motion fails. Number 28. Legislator Kulasek. Resolution recognizing September 15, 2017 through October 15, 2017 as National Hispanic Heritage Month. Second. And all Republicans as well. Thank you. And Mr. Abel. All right, roll call, please. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Dillard, DeSavo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Benelli. 19 ayes, Madam Chair, and the desk is clear. Okay, we do have some people signed up for public participation. If they are still here, I give them a lot of credit. Um, 
Nikki Verisaka. And this is with regard to Towers in Otisville. Hi everyone, I'm Kate from Otisville um, and I think we're talking a lot about environment and health tonight and then there is another very serious topic for your consideration. Before I start, I want to say that I 100% support the emergency services and their needs to improve communication and I understand there are dead zones and, and people potentially at risk there but uh, minimising one risk doesn't mitigate other risks. And there's a lot of risks um, associated with these towers, both for health and for the natural environment. And I'm concerned that the county hasn't really um, done its due diligence to prove otherwise. Um, I'm aware that a checklist was submitted to the NEPA back in 2015, and it claimed that there, were no, there was going to be no negative impacts on the natural environment of this, but no study was actually done. So I want to know, where's the evidence to support the claims that there's going to be no negative impacts of this tower? And, you know, there's there's protected species up on the ridge line. There are rattlesnakes. There are long-eared bats living up there. So where's the documentation to show there's going to be no harm to their habitats? And then we have farms, farm animals in the surrounding areas. And I'm, I don't know if you've seen the, the videos of animals living in close proximity to these towers, but it's quite frightening. There's calves being born, they're so deformed they can't walk. Dogs with swollen limbs, chickens that can't support their own body weight. So it, the risks are real and they need to be taken seriously. And, and so far I've only just talked about animals, but what about people? This tower's going up right near Hidden Valley. And there are, there are hundreds of young children living there. You know, we've all heard about the dangers of cell, the electromagnetic radiation on young children's brains just from cell phones. And we're talking about putting a giant microwave right above their heads. So I, I just think that this hasn't been taken seriously enough. I've been out in the streets talking to people in Otisville. We've been collecting signatures and the people are not happy about this. Uh, we know it's for EMS, so we support that, but this tower supports six gigahertz frequencies. EMS only needs seven to 800, so we don't even know what kind of technology is going on to this tower. So I tell you, the people aren't in support of this, they're very concerned about it. They've been uninformed or misinformed, you know, and we, we, we choose to live in this region because we care about the natural environment, we care about our health. That's why our town has protected that ridge line. And this tower is going up, you know, no, even the town can't stop it. We want to change a doorknob, we have to get permission, the, the tower just goes up without any permission. So I just want you to know that as a, as a town we're very concerned about this and, and we want you to take it seriously. We want the building to stop immediately until the proper studies have been done. And, and I can tell you that the town is, is going to express this through their votes. So I really hope that you consider it and take it seriously. Thank you. like to fight hard for what we work for. Uh, we did have a very cooperative, bipartisan um, law that we passed, which was a ridgeline protection law to protect our ridgeline. And here's a singular opportunity that the county has. It's a county emergency management services radio tower that's being sited at the same exact location as the previous tower, which on the surface, uh, on the surface of it makes a lot of sense. But we are proposing and we're asking that the county consider uh, relocating that site to another area along the same ridge line that can have the same effect as far as emergency management uh, communications that uh, can actually remove one of the towers, either sharing tower space with the tower behind the federal prison or possibly a tower sited over at the 84 
exit two uh, location. And so what we're doing is we're appealing to the county to consider those locations before they throw up a tower that's roughly, you know, almost twice as tall as the one that's there now. I understand what it's like to uh, pass a local law, work hard as a legislator, and then find that a higher government um, entity has authority and you have none in your own determination. It's very frustrating. And the whole time I was listening to you and to this crowd who I applaud, very frustrating. So that's our appeal. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Stiles. <laughs> Nikki and Lisa Stiles, please come forward. Also the radio talent. Good evening, everybody. My name is Nikki Macaluso, and I live in Otisville, New York. And I'm here to discuss the, the tower that's going up, unbeknownst to our um, building inspector. Um, our town supervisor, they had no idea about the construction. It may have come to light seven years ago. However, um, the work that started in the summer was only on Saturdays when the building office was closed. Uh, a lot of explosives, um, drilling, and um, a bunch of neighbors uh, were looking for a dog actually behind me, and we stumbled across a massive construction site. And um, we were very alarmed. Uh, I posted a bunch of pictures and a video on Facebook. Social media has its uh, moments and it worked this time because the building inspector inboxed me and called me. It was during Memorial Day, I mean, um, Labor Day weekend, so the office was closed on Monday. And on Tuesday, when they did more research, they had no idea it was happening. They put a stop work order on it immediately, and which the county overrode three days later. Um, I am right underneath it. I'm not opposed to the radio um, communications and to the five sheriffs in this room today. I thank you for your service. I have law enforcement in my family and I do not want to have you guys in harm's way. However, um, I'm, I have four kids. Uh, Hidden Valley is right below that. There's probably over 200 kids there, just in the valley there. The school of Otisville is two miles away. Um, I put in a FOIL request on Monday, and they came back saying there was no notification to the residents at all. So I think it's a big communications issue. We also went to the uh, town board on September 18th, and everybody on the panel had no idea. They were actually quite embarrassed. The county sent over a gentleman named Mr. Carney that represented Orange County. He assured us that it was only going to be the radio tower, um, the radio communication that was coming up. And our concern is more about 4G, 5G. So on page 10 of your proposal that was amended in February 2015, it stated that um, on page 10 that 6G was coming. Mind blowing. Like there's no environmental impact studies. Um, we're worried about eminent domain. We, I agree with uh, Greg Stiles that maybe it should be relocated, try to relocate it to where the um, federal and state prisons are. There's easy access, it's paved roads. Marianne Drive is a nightmare. You will not be able to get a fire truck up there for five months. I live on the ridge. I have to park my car at the bottom of the hill for four months with my kids walking up and down. You're not going to be able to get emergency services up there, firemen um, and police. So I urge you to um, hear out the town of Mount Hope because it is a serious issue. And, and, and I thank you for your time and this late. Thank you. Everybody, uh, thanks for having us. Again, I know it's late, we'll try and be brief here. I am also talking about the same tower that is being built on the ridge line of Mount Hope. I live in Mount Hope. Just wanted to be clear on what we're asking. <clears throat> this tower is, as um, she just pointed out, it is in a location that makes it nearly impossible to gain ready access to it to service it for four months out of the year. If that tower goes down, all the police that it's supposed to be covering, you're gonna have a problem. So this is bad for EMS. That tower has, has plans to have a 6G technology on it, looming 200 feet over the town. It's bad for the town. There's a very simple solution. There's a couple other locations, uh, one to the north, one to the south. There's a third location further down south, much better access. 
Uh, your coverage will be as good, if not better, to cover EMS. There's no reason to leave it there. Let's just move it. It's a really simple thing we're asking. We've got, at this point, over, I think, 900 signatures, which is a lot in Mount Hope. This is the only issue in Mount Hope. This is what people will be voting for. So if you care about who's going to be on the town board of Mount Hope and how those votes will trickle up to the county, this is it. And again, we're not asking for an enormous thing. Stop working on the tower there. Take a look at the other sites. I'm sure we're going to find one of those sites is more suitable, better for EMS and, and support and access, better for the communication. The town is going to be thrilled because the ridge line is now restored. Very easy. Please do it. Thank you. place that would respect the town ordinances, the Ridgeline Law, 900 plus town residents, and we got those in two weeks. That's just two weeks of, uh, of talking to people about it. So again, no one's against EMS. I mean, I'm not crazy. When I pick up the phone, I need something for me and my family. You know, no one's against this tower, just against the location of the tower. And um, you know, if, if you look at it, 200 feet, 6G, no one was informed about it. You, you know, we have, you should have seen other people at the town meeting and no one's you know, the town doesn't even know about it. Um, so I think as far as uh, legal responsibility, you have no legal responsibility as the county to listen to the town. But I think you have a moral and certainly a political responsibility. Obviously, Ms. Bonacek is uh, vacating that seat and November 4th, uh, there will be a vote and there's three candidates and there's 900 to 1,000 people right now and growing that care about this issue. And not all people, you know what we want? We want someone that's gonna stand up for us. Honestly, I mean, I don't know if you call it a Republican issue because you got big government coming in here and pushing around the town. I mean, honestly, that's what it looks like to the people. You guys are coming here, put a stop work order, and you're saying, you know, we don't care about that stop work order, we're gonna keep building. And uh, you can't hide behind EMS, because no one's against EMS. So it's not a battle of uh, us against EMS, no one's against EMS. But I think when the determination was made to build the tower there, it just seemed like the easiest location. Hey, we already got a tower there, just put another one up, 70 feet higher, so, you know, three times as big, but uh, we don't really understand. I mean, the county representative that came to our meeting the other day told us there wouldn't even be 4G on it. You know, so like, either that guy doesn't understand the technology, or maybe he misspoke, or maybe he's trying to mislead people, confuse them. I'm not a scientist, uh, but certainly I understand kind of we have a sensible solution here. There's other locations, we already have towers, you don't need to desecrate the ridge line. It's gonna be, we all know how that goes, right? Like you put one tower up, put a fire tower up there 100 years ago, that's the only reason there's towers up there. So then in five years, what, what is it, a 300 foot tower, and then two more towers, and a cell tower, I mean, it is a domino effect, and people in Mount Hope don't want it. I mean, it's a quality of life issue for us, and, uh, and people will certainly be voting for it. So I think it's kind of, the county was wrong, but uh, you got a chance to be a hero here. It's pretty easy out. You just find a different location, you just stop building. You got a little bit of rebar on the ground, costs a couple bucks, so what? One, 900, 1,000 people, and that's growing, and it's not something you're gonna sweep under the rug, let me tell you. People are pretty upset about it, and there's not much to be upset about in Mount Hope other than that right now. So uh, yeah, that seat is gonna be occupied by someone, and uh, I guess you guys need to think about what you want that to be. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Maloney. And that concludes our public participation. Um, I want to thank all of you that just spoke that for hanging out and uh, to take the opportunity to address all of us. So at this point, I want to thank all of you for coming, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned.